welcome to Word at One today. Welcome. And uh, as you know, we are reading from the Gospel of John and we're up to uh, chapter 12 today. And the bit that we stopped at was a very well-known story of when Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead and um, you know, thrust himself even more into the public eye. So we're going to pick up from that today in chapter 12 and following on from our reading, we'll show you the, the final little piece of the clip for this section of John from the Bible Project and um, then we'll get on to a new section uh, following. So over to Kenny and he'll pick up that uh, reading for okay. us. Right. Hello folks and uh, yeah, as Lena said, we're going to be reading from John chapter 12. So I'll read the first half and then hand over to Lynn. Six days before the Passover, this is uh, headed Mary anoints Jesus at Bethany. Jesus came to Bethany where Lazarus was, whom Jesus had raised from the dead. So they gave a dinner for him there. Martha served and Lazarus was one of those reclining with him at table. Mary therefore took a, a pound of expensive ointment made from pure nard and anointed the feet of Jesus and wiped his feet with her hair. The house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. But Judas Iscariot, one of the, his disciples, he who was about to betray him, said, Why was this anointment not sold for 300 denarii and given to the poor? He said this, not because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief. And having charge of the money bag, he used to help himself to what was put into it. Jesus said, Leave her alone, so that she may keep it for the day of my burial. For the poor you always have with you, but you do not always have me. When the large crowd of the Jews learned that Jesus was there, they came not only on account of him, but also to see Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. So the chief priests made plans to put Lazarus to death as well, because on account of him many of the Jews were going away and believing in Jesus. The next day, the large crowd that had come to the feast heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem. So they took branches of palm trees and went out to meet him, crying out, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, even the King of Israel. And Jesus found a young donkey and sat on it, just as it is written, Fear not, daughter of Zion, behold, your king is coming, sitting on a donkey's colt. His disciples did not understand these things at first, but when Jesus was glorified, then they remembered that these things had been written about him and had been done to him. The crowd that had been with him when he called Lazarus out of the tomb and raised him from the dead continued to bear witness. The reason why the crowd went to meet him was that they heard he had done this sign. So the Pharisees said to one another, You see that you are gaining nothing. Look, the world has gone after him. Now among those who went up to worship at the feast were some Greeks. So these came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and said to him, asked him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew, Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus, and Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Truly, truly, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Whoever loves his life loses it, and whoever hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal life. If anyone serves me, he must follow me, and where I am, there will be my servant also." If anyone serves me, the Father will honour him. <coughs> Amen. Yeah, and uh, so here we are now picking up at um, verse 27. Now is my soul troubled, and what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour, but for this purpose I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. The crowd that stood there and heard it said that it had thundered. Others said an angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered, This voice has come for your sake, not mine. Now is the judgment of this world. Now will the ruler of this world be cast out. And I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to show by what kind of death he was going to die. So the crowd answered him, We have heard from the law that the Christ remains forever. How can you say that the Son of Man must be lifted up? Who is this Son of Man? So Jesus said to them, 
The light is among you for a little while longer. Walk while you have the light, lest darkness overtake you. The one who walks in the darkness does not know where he's going. While you have the light, believe in the light, that you may become sons of light. When Jesus had said these things, he departed and hid himself from them. Though he had done many signs before them, they still did not believe in him, so that the word spoken by the prophet Isaiah might be fulfilled. Lord, who has believed what he heard from us, and to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? Therefore they could not believe, for again Isaiah said, He has blinded their eyes and hardened their heart, lest they see with their eyes and understand with their heart and turn, and I would heal them. Isaiah said these things because he saw his glory and spoke of him. Nevertheless, many, even of the authorities, believed in him. But for fear of the Pharisees, they did not confess it so that they would not be put out of the synagogue. For they loved the glory that comes from man more than the glory that comes from God. And Jesus cried out and said, Whoever believes in me, believes not in me, but in him who sent me. And whoever sees me, sees him who sent me. I have come into the world as light, so that whoever believes in me may not remain in darkness. If anyone hears my words and does not keep them, I do not judge him, for I did not come to judge the world, but to save the world. The one who rejects me and does not receive my words has a judge. The word that I have spoken will judge him on the last day. For I have not spoken on my own authority, but the Father who sent me has himself given me a commandment, what to say and what to speak. And I know that his commandment is eternal life. What I say, therefore, I say as the Father has told me. Amen. And uh, may God add his blessing to the reading uh, of his word. And uh, we are so blessed to have his word at, uh, to hand uh, in this country. And uh, we praise God for that. Um, let's just pray. Father, we just want to thank you for your word to us. We pray, Lord God, just for uh, the truth of your word to encourage our hearts today uh, to pray for your kingdom to come, to see your light, Lord Jesus, uh, impact our uh, lives and the lives of our families, Lord, the lives of those that we are in relationship with in the communities that we live in. Lord, that your uh, name would be a light in this nation, Lord, as it was in times gone by. And we pray, God, just for your mercy, for your grace, for your presence and for your power, Lord, that there would be that uh, uh, turning to you, that there would be that recognition of who you are, the Son of God, the Son of Man, the one who came into uh, Jerusalem riding on a donkey at that Palm Sunday um, uh, day. And Lord, we thank you that... Uh, there are those who will lift up their voices in praise to you all over this world today. And we join with them mm -hmm. and we uh, acknowledge uh, you, Jesus. And in the midst of this situation, as we go into this week, we pray, God, just that you would uh, bless and encourage us, that you'd strengthen us. Lord, that we would have a song of praise, that we would uh, seek to prime the pump ourselves by reading your word, by um, getting into a place of sung worship um, to seek you with our uh, hearts whether silently or whether out loud God move in our hearts through your Holy Spirit uh, this week that we will see uh, your presence and that we will uh, have our prayers answered Lord that we would uh, understand your word and we pray God just for your goodness and mercy to follow us all the days of our lives in Jesus name Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. So that's us for today, isn't it? Our, our little um, reading. And um, we will show you that clip now. Yeah. And uh, I keep saying this, but just to, it's it's a part of having the permission to use these clips just to make sure that you're all aware where we got it from. Mm -hmm. And so you can find it for yourself on www.bibleproject.com. Well worth a look there. And so um, God bless you today. And we'll see you again really soon. So, bye for now. Bye for now. 
After this is a block of stories set in Jerusalem during the Feast of Tabernacles, which retold the story of Israel's wilderness wanderings as God guided them with the pillar of cloud and fire and provided them water in the desert. And Jesus gets up in the temple courts and he shouts, If anyone is thirsty, let them come to me and drink. And then later he says, I am the light of the world. He's claiming to be the illuminating presence of God and the life-saving gift of God to his people. And some people believe and follow him, but others are offended and still others try to kill him for these exalted claims. The final feast story is during Hanukkah, which means rededication. It's about how Judah Maccabee cleared the temple of idols and set it apart as holy once more. And Jesus goes into the temple area and says that he is the one whom God has set apart as the Holy One, and that he is the true temple where God's presence dwells. And he also says, I and the Father are one. This makes the Jerusalem leaders so angry, they set in motion a plan to kill Jesus, and so he retreats from the city. Now all these conflicts, they culminate in one last miraculous sign. Jesus hears that his dear friend Lazarus is sick, but his family lives near Jerusalem, which is now a death trap for Jesus. Now, Jesus could stay away and he would save his own life, but he loves Lazarus. So once he hears that Lazarus has died, he goes to raise him from the dead, and he calls him to life out of his tomb, knowing that it will cost him his own life. And the news of this amazing sign, it spreads quickly, of course, and just as Jesus knew it happened, the Jerusalem leaders hear about it and begin conspiring to murder him. And so he rides into Jerusalem as Israel's king, who's rejected by its leaders. So the first half of John draws to a close with this story about Jesus laying down his life as an act of love for his friend. And this, of course, is also a sign pointing forward to the cross, which we'll explore more in the next video. But for now, that's the first half of the Gospel of John.